An eyewitness account of an incident which happened at, at Temat filling station in August last year may just hold vital clues in the case of the three girls suspected to have been kidnapped in Takradi. The three reportedly went missing in the Westing region capital three weeks ago. One of them as far back as August last year. They are 15-year-old Priscilla Mantebia Kranchi, who was last seen in December last year at Nkrofo, and 18-year-old Ruth Love Quasing, who was last seen on December 4, 2018 at BU Junction. The third girl, 21-year-old Priscilla Blessing Bentum, who went missing in August last year at Kansarodo, is the one Reverend Robert Nelson at Dai believes he and his driver encountered on August 20 last year. In an interview with Reverend, he recounts the episode he witnessed where a lady who fits the description of Priscilla Bentum called out for help from a Nigerian registered Toyota caravan, which had four male occupants. That day, 28th of uh, August, uh, around 9 to 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, I was on my way to Lome for massaging. And when we got to, this is where I normally fill my tank. So we came in and my driver was filling the tank. We had almost finished when this car also came. Uh, it was, uh, I couldn't actually identify the car, but I think it's my driver who saw it well. Okay, we will be speaking with your driver as well when we're done with, with interviewing you. Yeah, so what happened was uh, when they came, there was this young lady shouting, So it drew my attention, and then uh, I looked at the car. But because I was on my way to go in and urinate, I asked my driver and the petrol attendant to interview the people, because, you know, this, this, this is what I said, so I rushed to go and urinate. By the time I came, they had moved off. So I asked my driver and he said, the, one of the boys opened the door and uh, he, he came out to say that uh, uh, she was their, her sister and uh, she was mentally uh, troubled and they were taking her back home for treatment, but they spoke three, actually, I, yeah, yeah, that is what I, and that they were coming from Takradi, and this is how she was behaving all the way from Takradi. If I, I, I didn't take the, the story as true. You didn't believe the story? I didn't believe the story, but I consoled myself that if it will continue, Chokoli, uh, uh, what do you call it, Toe, where they have policemen who have been checking, and then uh, fly, uh, Sugakope, is also there. So it is possible they may be able to intervene. And uh, it was a topic I you know, discussed a few minutes as I drove off. And that is how it ended. You know, and uh, so when yesterday, was it yesterday, when the, on the, on, in the news you, it was being complained that one of the ladies was uh, uh, kidnapped on the 17th, and uh, it, it, somebody said the probability that they might be taking them to Nigeria. My driver heard it, and he rushed to draw my attention. That is how I said, well, Lord, let me also bring out this. Uh, maybe it will help in, in, in the course of you know, trying to search for them. And uh, what I would suggest is that I know the Nigerian car or any car that crosses our frontier is registered. And so maybe from that time, up to about 2 o'clock, it is possible that either at a flower border or Segbe border, where come up, most often I see the Nigerian small cars and buses, uh, I meet them there. And so probably, probably they will be able to help to identify the car, at least just to know that he carried them uh, to Nigeria. Uh, we can speak for sure that it's a passenger car, you know, because Nigerian number and they did not also take note whether it was a commercial or private. So this is how uh, it ended. John is passed on the contact of Reverend Adai to the police who have since reached out to him. Accompanying the Reverend that fateful day was his driver John Offer who was a lot closer to the action. He corroborates his boss's account of the encounter. 
August 20th, and up around 10. Now you have a senior call. You do, 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 you into your packet, and I'm saying, me, me, jump me, pump me, can't you want to know? Me, to say, can you move the Oh, me, Pamacho, when you me, why, I'm with me, call me, Pamacho, why, oh, when you me, oh, I'm with me, call when you me, Miss Remo, oh, Cocum, you, but you're a rash canoe, Tia, we are saying, Rasha canoe, Mamba, who more, Nippa, me, and a tip back seat, and Obano, and Nippa, me, and son, or Barnet in Finfrina. You know, a back one, a back one, and a back one, a bema back one front, in the driver, and the air is in the part five. In the air, I have a pepper, on the Amokan, I say sliding door, you didn't want to say a car bear, a Toyota, ash color, say car with his way. Into a beer, and a pepper, on a Nippon or Ben or ticket, Nano Castle, Bema or ticket, Nano Castle, a new Yakatoa or Yari. I say, I say, all board down to no more Kakasani area in Nigeria. No more Kakasabe. Or can she? Because I can't treat anything my answer, anything in my yang Rashi, a call horn. See a call, you could run a more mobile petronibi, a baho, my yang in Abbe, and see Omka and on Omsu, on Crazy Omfin, a friend saying, Takradi, and on Babesia call Nigeria. And see Omka Kasan Munian area. Into a mukaa zewo, a mufita kwa dene, and ndi ya take action biya because so mufita kwa dene na mbadi. I say police, police wakwa nusu bebre. Into a mukaa sa anu, anem ye ye ba mubu ye. Into actually anza ni ati se se kwa de guest biya ira ira anu. Anza na ya juu baso se eh anango fui ena na danu a mubu chuma ya nti mi an ya action biya na na. So John Ofer, essentially who's a driver of Reverend Adai, tells the story and he gives more vivid, a bit more vivid account of the episode. He talks about the fact that he was standing right there by their vehicle because he was waiting for the vehicle to be refueled. He says whilst waiting there, then the vehicle, a Nigerian registered vehicle, drove into the filling station to stand to, to park right next to his vehicle and they were also coming to buy fuel. It says whilst waiting there were four occupants, four male occupants, in fact five people and uh, two of them had sandwiched this lady who we believe or they believe to be Priscilla Bentum. They had sandwiched him in the middle, in the back seat and there were two other men, the driver in front and another passenger in front. He says when they got there then Priscilla Bentum, or this lady who we believe to be Priscilla Bentum, was yelling and calling out for help. And they approached them, but when they approached them, this young man, there was one young man who was sitting right next to the door, he opened it and he told them that the lady is unwell or mentally unstable and that they're sending her to Nigeria and that they were actually coming from Takradi. So that was his account. He said at that point, they felt that, well, it was, they bought into the story and felt that they could go on. But he says later on, when the stories or the footage or the pictures of these ladies started splashing all over the screen, he decided that he, it struck him that it may just be this girl. And so he called up his boss, who is uh, Reverend Adai, and his boss also confirmed that it probably may be uh, this late. Let's listen to the rest of the interview. Uh, August 20 last year. No, 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 and I get none now because again, no, oh, soon, oh, soon, oh, me, Pamacho, why, Pamacho, Muny, me, Omo de me, call me, Nimbe, Yomo de me, call Omo Kumi, me, Pamacho, me, Pamacho, and the guy no tick gate, no pen, idea, oh, who say, yeah, 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 for me, you know, pet and no beer gate, no so, a new yakatoa, no, or yari, and Tomo Cassani, yari, or no quanacas, or more can you know, Bianca, or no quanacas, and to a cassa, yeah, 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 so, okay. 
se ni nua ketwa na se omu fita kra dia ba besia ko Nigeria dia na police fo wo kwan so bebre dia se ndie omu fita kra dia be du idea ndie e den a ga ni be dide wo barrier bi a police betimi ai den a che wo na se ai enti na maye so he goes on to explain further that they allowed they thought they would allow the vehicle to go because if they say they are coming all the way from Takradi, there would have been several police checkpoints and barriers that probably should have noticed and maybe red flags raised about this incident and that if nothing like that happened, then probably they were indeed legit and the story that they were telling was true. But they still also felt that on their journey, in continuing their journey all the way through the Togo border, they would have come across additional police barriers and they would have also picked up what was happening in the vehicle. Let's continue. Yanko Eda about a so say a bear saga we are the information of my reverend. Oh, say bear September Nimu. No, won't say you need to. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Umbra, okay. Yeah, yeah, cause of you. In the end, yank at the end at all so. Now, the band at all so a moon who say, Ebia. Sa gay ya musha no ewo shell has it August last year. No na yes a cheno. Um yeah a tom is soon and say time now we say amount a friend say information ne bar say as you uh quadabi ira or takradi and quadabi ira or takradi no. A hon and a mamma green bar so say ah and uh takrad get no see a boy ni can say ninyanu or ninyano yarena or fi takradi. No babes or the neck Nigeria Kwasani Yarin. Ah, and ye be a that day no, not get no yari. Yes, almost the need Yani. I want a mamma doing yet then a basso. It wait to me, so we who a girl no ninfoni. Wait to me with me the infoni nature I'll be to me at Chem in the Pacro. Uh okay, would the tremi I met me I say or no, senor no so. So I'm going to show uh, I have a photo of the missing girls. I'm gonna show it. Uh, to the gentleman here, and let's see who he points out. Inti emane o hasi no, omo ye miensa. Oh, inti pesa o chere se omo miensa no, omo ni e na hu ye. We, we, go we. Ye wo mfi mfi hasi. Eh, ono e fair color kakra. Fair color. Eh. Na na ni twin yin su wuhu na na ni twin yin hu. Eh, ni twin yin na yeso wa wa yeso wa bo rasta kakrebi. But not the way I know all struggle or kind in Munintino. As I quite say, no, say, Tari, I say, light black bisa, top black bisa, top black bisa. All right, that, that would also be some relevant information if uh, at the time she went missing, if she was wearing that uh, a top, a black top, or probably it's also possible that dress would have been changed and uh, she had been giving something else. But now, what should I say? Not more can you see her say no? No more mucano is he fan. Me 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 na me di kamba pump in anu face. On was a pump, a second pump no. In the me me boop this in the way na me train me boss no. Pet and almost some way then. I'm more by. So I time when I'm in trance here because. No, it's no musi he. No musi me left side. In the chase I had say ya. Bibi a yijine ya in chain hold. Me me or right and I'm more more left. Right. So I'd like you to know that uh, Ofer John, when I gave him the opportunity, I showed him the three photos. He picked the photo of Priscilla Blessing Bentum, who we know as age 21, and who disappeared, or the last time they saw her was at Kansawurodo in Takradi on August 17. Now this incident, he tells us, took place on the 20th of August between 9 and 10 a.m. So that's about three days after she disappeared. He's giving us some additional information. He talks about the fact that this lady, this young lady, was wearing a black top. And so that should also give some clues to the police who will be looking for uh, the whereabouts of this uh, young lady. But thank you very much, uh, John Ofe, for, for sharing this information with us. And I hope uh, you're available. Well, managers of the shell filling station confirmed they regularly serve Nigeria-bound vehicles. And though they had CCTV cameras that would have captured events, they explained their storage devices unable to retain footage taking for that long. Now, one other vital clue for which reason I came here to re-enact or retrace the steps 
of that incident back then in August 20 uh, last year was because I felt that it is most likely that we would have CCTV cameras positioned at this fuel filling station. Indeed, there are CCTV cameras at this uh, fuel filling station and uh, there's one right there on the extreme right. In fact, there are two or about three of them at that position. And then again, there's uh, another one to this other side of the filling station building itself, the mart itself. Now, I sought to find out from management of the fuel filling station if they indeed record footage from this. They tell me, yes, they do record footage from this, but unfortunately, the material they have, or they don't store that much footage. The footage they have lasts for just about maximum a month, and so they don't have anything that goes back to August 20. They explained to me, because they don't have too much enough space on the hard drive, the fresh material after a while overwrites whatever old footage they would have stored. On the screen here, uh, the 8th of November 2018, but there's nothing recorded there. Now, uh, the one shown in red, look, mean, uh, something has been recorded there. All right. So let's demonstrate by, see, this is a playback at that time. Let's see if you take this out, it's uh, 1350, that's, that's 150. 150, yeah. Uh, this recording there, which you can expand, I'll be zoomed to get this, this picture. All right. But you're saying, so essentially, this uh, CCTV, the storage is not enough to last as long as uh, to go back to the August 20 date? No. But this is not the only point we can get footage. I'm sure the police have their CCTVs all over the town and all over Accra. And if they decide to diligently go through the footage, given the date, it is likely that we could pick up some additional clues about this incident. Well, the encounter, if confirmed, will lend credence to an emerging theory that the ladies may have been victims of human trafficking. A lawyer with International Justice Mission, Sama Mankwa, told Joy News on Thursday the police would have to begin to work with their partner security agencies in the sub-region. Joining us uh, via Skype right now is Adam Bona, a security analyst with Security Warehouse. Thank you, sir. Now, what do you make of this eyewitness account and the possibility that the girls may have been trafficked out of the country? Well, thank you very much and good evening to your cherished viewers. Uh, for now, I, I would want to say these are information that the police would have to probably collect and work on. Uh, sometimes when these incidents happen, uh, the information is put out there. You know, you have people reporting what they might have seen, what they cited, different dates, and, and all that, what they've heard. And so it is up to the police to collect all this information, put them together, and see, you know, whether they can make something out of it. I believe that uh, it, is, it is better late than never. But I'm also reliably uh, formed. And I am hopeful that the police is almost up uh, on rivaling what happened in this year were abducted and probably if we are fortunate they will uh, rescue them and so uh, i want to say every information that is coming need to be analyzed but from your report uh, the eyewitnesses you spoke to i want to believe they reported the incident to the police if they have they should report to the police and for, for the police to probably uh, you know interview them interrogate them what did, you see, what did you see and what didn't you see? But the other about the CCTV hard drive uh, of Brighton uh, is simple. If they have a date when the incident happened, we have what we call the recovery software. And so every information that that hard drive went through that hard drive, if that hard drive is not bent, it can be recovered in one piece. And so I don't want to believe that uh, the police should be able to do that. But uh, in, my, you know, in doing that, it takes a bit of time to put the hard drive, take it out, 
and try to, you know, uh, recover lost, you know, recovering lost files. Uh, this this is something that, uh, you know, done easily. If they sit on it, I'm sure uh, they should be able to uh, know what happened a particular day, even though when you recover, sometimes you don't get the dates gets to mix up. But I want to believe that the police could do could do a diligent work to get hold of uh, the hard drive that you know, there's a way of doing it. You give, yeah, there's a way of doing it, and I'm sure the police understand how this works. And so if it is true, I believe uh, this will give us some information, which I believe the police have the technical, I mean, I mean, we we, we be able to, the police should be able to do this. All right. He's right. Now, one of the other things I believe that the police could also be looking at is the CCTV footage that's available today themselves, and which CCTV footage I know that we have one, or CCTV camera we know, I know we, they have one at the Aflao border, which clearly should be able to tell which vehicles uh, exited, exited the country on August 20 around that time, which information could also be vital. Exactly. And I know that the... Uh, those CCTVs that are mounted at various points uh, have bigger storage and uh, stored all that. And so once there is some, the once there is a date and a possible approximated time, usually when there is no date and there is no approximated time, it becomes difficult to work with it. But I believe that those who saw something and are reporting, uh, they should get in touch with the police if they haven't done that. Uh, so that this is this, uh, story we put together, the police can go back and check on their own uh, CCTV and see what they can find. Probably uh, this story could check out, it might be true. Uh, this big idea, uh, which is purported to have uh, kidnapped, probably uh, held lady uh, hostage as we are driven to Nigeria, probably is back into this country. And so we'll be located and probably ask the occupant what they did with the lady, if it. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Adam Bona. And just uh, by way of inf information, I know that the police have reached out to uh, Reverend Adai, and so certainly they are on the beat, and I'm sure they will be meeting him uh, sometime soon. And indeed, I spoke when I spoke with them. Uh, both uh, Reverend Adai and the driver indicated their willingness to support the police and uh, be available or cooperate with the police in the investigation. Now, still ahead in the bulletin, there's a very interesting story coming up where a young man walked into a uh, lava firm in Kumasi to report his colleague, car snatchers, had denied him a share of booty from a car. They are stolen. That story promises to be really interesting. We'll have that one coming your way in a bit. But right now, we're going to the northern region. And after 16 years of protracted chief stancy clashes between two royal families in Dagon, a new dawn is set as newly selected Yana, Yana Abu Kari Muhammad II is our door Friday. His investiture, which ended some hours ago, according to analysts, opens up a new page of peace, unity, and prosperity for a kingdom that for almost two decades witnessed conflicts, mistrust, and severe underdevelopment. 80-year-old Yana Bukhari II became the 44th person to occupy the Nams King and the Gbewa Palace. He is expected to lead the process to fully reconcile the two gates, ensure peace and unity in the traditional area, and further champion development in the kingdom. Among his priorities as king of the Dagman kingdom, Diana wants to promote education, ensure food security, and sustain peace. Here is Justice Beidou's exclusive interview with Diana Abukari Muhammad II. <laughs> Uh, first of all, he wants to thank uh, the chiefs within Dagbang and even beyond the lives of the representatives from the Asante Hini, Yogumura, Nairi, the government delegation, and His Excellency himself. And he also wants to thank the former president, uh, John Dramani Mahama, for his presence. 
And uh, he continued to say that uh, the position he's holding today is not for him alone, but for the entire Dagba. So he's calling on all chiefs and indigents of Dagba to help him so that at the end of the day, Dagba will win. So do me and can you hear love Nyangama? To Chilum, so do no to the Bongo, the Tensamani, Kaka Tap Taya, Canon the Tap Sawara, now you can know Napoli. That's a villa thing you cut at the Bongo, Casso come to Bong, Simitisa Yirka Nadabong. Nothing I will cut the Bongo Maradi. He want peace and unity. That is his mission. And that he alone cannot do it, but all individuals have rule. For that matter, it is a collective responsibility on us to try as much as possible to help him. So he is saying that he's calling everybody on board, whether you are coming from Abudu or Andani. And he did mention that the name Abudu and Andani is dead and gone. From today on going, we are now the Gombes. So he wants unity in Dagbang, he wants prosperity in Dagbang. So he wants the government to assist him so that there will be much development in Dagbang. his first objectives is to make sure that he bring the people of Dagbang together so that we'll be one. If we come together, definitely there will be peace. And when there is peace, development will flow. So he did mention that uh, our municipal hospital is in a bad state. And he's calling on government to uh, try and look after it because health is very important. We also have water crisis in Yendi here. And if you look at our internal rules within Yendi, very, very bad. So these are some of the challenges that he has. And he thinks that when we come together, definitely the government will also help us to resolve those challenges. The, we shouldn't be in haste that we should just wait a while we'll see what is going to happen in that bank. It's not a big tax for him. The search for peace in Dagban started in 2002 when former President John Kufo set up the Asantehene led group of three eminent chiefs to resolve, through customs and tradition, the Dagban chieftain's dispute after the gruesome murder of late Yana Yakubandai II. Addressing the gathering, President Kufuado urged the new king to work towards uniting all groups connected to the Dagban skin. We are not to rest on our oars and assume that every citizen of Dagbo is elated about the new peace and the enskinment of a new Yana. Indeed, there is a new term for people who profit from conflict. They are called conflict preneurs. We have to be resolute in warding of such people by strengthening the process of reconciliation amongst the people of Dagbon. The Dagomba people have Islam as their religion. And the Quran states, and I quote, when two groups of you fight, when two groups of you fight, make peace between them. But if one party is recalcitrant, 
and persistent war. Let the entire group come together to ward them off, unquote. We are not to fear the strategy of our enemies, but our own mistakes. Dagbon does not have to fear an external enemy. Dagbon is a great state, one of the most tradi ancient traditional states of our history. It has survived many marauding forces and repelled many enemies. Gabon, Gabon can only be brought to its knees by internal malcontents. And it is our collective duty and in our collective interest to fend them off. I therefore call on all sons and daughters of Dagbon to unite behind the new Yana, Mahama Abukari II. He's a man of experience and dignity, and I'm confident he will discharge his duties of his new office with distinction. The Quran, as I have said before, I am neither an Abudu nor an Andani. In other news, three headsmen have been shot and killed in the past week at Samso near Drobunso in the Setra from Plains District in a clash with farmers there. It follows the murder of a security man at a local plantation firm earlier this month. There are fears the incident could be a reprisal attack for the murder of the security man. But police say it is too early to conclude. Inshira FM or Heming to joins me live with details. Now, or Heming, what more information do you have regarding this incident? Thank you, Israel. Residents of Samso in the Secretary Afram Plains uh, District have already denied uh, uh, carrying out this reprisal attack. Uh, they believe that the attacks were carried out by uh, perpetrators who live outside the community as early as 6 a.m. yesterday. Uh, they, they were in the uh, bushes to attack the herdsmen from their camp. According to the Efijase, this uh, Divisional Commander ACP Philip Basante, uh, he wouldn't want to admit that this is a reprisal attack. Since they have they have not arrested anybody in connection uh, with this particular incident, but he says uh, police will continue to investigate the matter thoroughly, and if they arrest any perpetrator, then they will be able to link uh, the incident to the death of the security man uh, who was uh, murdered. Uh, shot by unknown assailants. Uh, for now, uh, two bodies have been picked up, a 60-year-old man and a 38-year-old man. They have all been deposited at the Agogo Presbyterian uh, Hospital morgue uh, pending autopsy. As we speak, uh, police and other residents of Samso, and then the uh, nomadic men uh, have joined search for uh, one other uh, headman uh, believe have gone missing. Initially, the report that we picked up was that five people have been killed and they were mixing in the community. But when police went to the community to search, uh, they found uh, two bodies. And then two others were also rescued in the bushes, uh, leaving one person. Right. By Israel, I can report that uh, several carcasses uh, of dead you know, uh, cattle uh, are scattered in the bushes. It's believed that the uh, attackers uh, did not only attack the herdsmen, but also attack uh, the castle. The castle. And uh, you know, part, uh, some of the castle that were killed were taken away uh, as meat. And I'm told uh, some of the community members have also been in the bushes in search of uh, the, the meat. And they have been enjoying. But police says they will continue to investigate and also call on residents uh, to volunteer information on the perpetrators uh, so that they will be able to arrest them. So for now, uh, nobody has been arrested in connection with the uh, herdsmen, uh, farmer, uh, suspected clashes in some so in this country, uh, are from Plains uh, District, Israel. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Oiming Teria from Shrifem, with that report. Now, on to that story that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. A young man walked into Lava Firm in Kumasi to report his colleague, Car Snatches, had denied him a share of booty from a car they are stolen. The man who looked unkempt wanted his accomplices arrested, but he ended up in handcuffs as police personnel who were present picked him up. The rest of us, Harry Donko, has more. The young man did not immediately identify himself, 
but indicated his friends snatched a taxi cab from its driver at dawn on Friday while he went ahead to steal a gas cylinder. He had shown up at the reception and requested to see a journalist. He gives some more information on the car snatching incident. Number. 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 He said after eating a meal he had prepared with a stolen gas cylinder, his friends bolted in the stolen car and left him behind. A police crime scene team at the office on a separate mission whisked him away when his attention was drawn. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumase. Bulletin. My name is Israel Lyon. Have a good night. This is Joy News Prime. Hello and welcome to PM Personality Profile.